来啦。Hi everyone and welcome back to another National Four Maths lesson. And in today's lesson, we will be talking about something called the scale factor. We will first look at basic shapes and how we can make them bigger or smaller by using scale, and then go on to look at more complex shapes that can be also similar. And then we will look at something called the linear scale factor and how we can use this to define how big or small of a change we have made to a shape in terms of its scale. And then finally, we will end on some examples to show how we can use this in real life problem solving situations. So to begin this lesson, we will be talking about similar shapes and define what they are. And basically, if you could imagine two objects side by side, and you can either imagine one that's a miniature version or a bigger version, then they can be described as similar shapes. And I've said the definition here is similar shapes are identical in shape, but not in size. And when we talk about being identical in shape, this means that the shapes have the same orientation and the same ratios. So let's have a look at shapes with the same orientation first. Basically what this means is they both face in the same direction as one another. So let's have a look at these two lines here. We can see that they have the same angle relative to each other, or we could say that they are parallel to each other. But if we look at shapes with different orientations, we can see here that these lines are not parallel and they face in totally different directions. So therefore they do not have the same orientation. And when we talk about having the same ratios, this just pretty much refers to being a miniature or a bigger version of the original shape. So we can see here we have an original rectangle and this one here is just a bigger version of the original so they have the same ratios. But if we look at these two here which have different ratios, we can see that this second one is definitely not a bigger version of the original because it's almost like it's thinner and longer so therefore they are, don't have the same ratio. So let's have a look at several examples with shapes and how they can be similar. Here we have two circles and we can see here we have the original one on the left and we've made this one on the right bigger. And the thing about circles is that they're always similar regardless because circles are always going to be identical in shape. There's no way that we can change the orientation or the ratio of a circle because it's what defines the shape itself. Even if we try and rotate one of these circles here, it's just going to end up with the same shape because a circle has no corners and it has a constant radius all the way around the shape. Therefore, we cannot change the ratio either. So anytime we see two pairs of circles, regardless of the size, they are always described as similar. So next up, we're going to have a look at squares. In this example here, we can see we have the original square and we've scaled it up and increased the size on this one. So we can say that the ratios are the exact same because this one is almost just like a bigger version of this one. And that's the case for all squares, like the same as circles, because we can't change one side of this a square without changing the other because that's what defines a square itself. All the lengths of each side are the same. So if we want to change the length of one side, all the other three have to change and that means the ratios stay the exact same and this is always the case for squares. And even in this example, they both have the same orientation as well. They both point in the same direction and the similar lines are parallel to each other. So therefore, these two examples are described as being similar. But on very rare occasions, we can have a square where it doesn't have the same orientation as the original. We can see here that it's off to an angle. Therefore, they don't have the same orientation and therefore they are not similar. But most of the problems that you will come across, you will just have the squares like this, where it's just the ratio that changes and the orientation doesn't change. So most of the time, squares are similar, but you just have to make sure that they're in the same direction and orientation. If that's the case, then they are similar. Now we are going to have a look at rectangles and look at the cases where they can be similar but also cannot be similar. So in this case here, we have the original rectangle and we've scaled it up to a larger size on this one here. Going through a little thing we need to do, we know that they have the same orientation because they are both facing in the same direction and the ratios look similar. So we can see that if we scale this one up, this is just a bigger version than this one. So therefore, these rectangles can be described as similar. But often the time with rectangles, they are not similar because unlike squares, we can change the length of either side 
and the other ones don't have to change. So for example this rectangle we can see that it's almost been squashed in compared to the scaled up version of the last one and because the ratios aren't the same between these two then they aren't described as similar. And with rectangles there's so many variations that we can do so we can have the rectangle looking like this one here where you can see again it doesn't have the same ratios and it doesn't have the same direction. And the same can be said if the rectangle looks like this so with rectangles often the time they can be similar but again often they are not, it just depends on what shape we've been given and it's up to us to assess them and look to ourselves and say does it have the same orientation? If yes, that's good. And does it have the same ratios? If it has both of these things then the shapes are similar. So we've spoken about how some basic shapes such as rectangles, squares and circles can be similar. But now we're going to have a look at similar shapes and similar figures in more detail and what two similar shapes have in common with each other. So we said in the previous slide that similar shapes have the same ratios and that just means that the corresponding sides, i.e. the sides that's been scaled up, so let's say for example this side right here and this side right here, they have the same ratio of being scaled up to for example this one here and this one here. And that just means that say we double the length of this side here to get that one, then we also have to double this one to get that one as well. And that's what we mean by the corresponding side having the same ratios. But even when we double or maybe half or reduce or increase it, regardless what we're doing of the shape, if they are similar, then the angles stay the same. And what we can see is then, for example, we have a star, that's this figure, for example, here. And although we've increased the size of the shape, then that angle there, because it's similar, the angle is still going to be the same as that angle there. And that can be the same for this one and this one here. So that's one unique thing about similar shapes. It doesn't matter if we change the size of the shape or increase or decrease the lengths. If they are similar, then the angles and the shapes are all going to stay the same. So now we're going to put some meaning behind what we've discussed. So let's say we have the two stars here and let's say this one on the left is shape 1 and this one is shape 2. We can say that shape 1 and shape 2 are similar because they have the same ratios and they have the same orientation with each other because this one here is just a larger version than the original shape 1. And because we've increased the size of shape 1 to shape 2, we can say that shape 2 is an enlargement of shape 1. And that just basically means that shape 2 is bigger than shape 1, but is also similar. But now let's have a look at this case. The shapes can still be similar, as we can see here, but this time shape 2 is now smaller than the original shape 1. So if it's smaller and they're similar, we can say that shape 2 is now a reduction of shape 1 because the size has reduced. So if the shape gets bigger and it's similar, we can say that it's an enlargement i.e. it's got bigger, or we can say that if it's got smaller and it's similar, we can say that the shape is now a reduction. So we've looked at how shapes can be scaled up and scaled down, but now how do we actually measure and quantify how much we scale up and scale down shapes? Well we can use this thing called the linear scale factor, and this basically just allows us to measure the size or amount of the reduction or enlargement that's taken place between the original shape and the scaled shape. And all this linear scale factor is, is just a number that tells us how much we should increase the length of the sides of the scaled up or scaled down shape, it's only a number. So let's say for example we have a scale factor of 2 between this circle and this one. That would just basically mean that shape 2 or circle 2 is double the size, it's twice as big as circle 1. So if it's a scale factor of 2, that means from the original shape we take that and we double it, this, all the sizes. And what that would mean is, if the scale factor is 2, then let's say for example, this shape 1 had a diameter of 2 meters, then that means if we're doubling the size, the diameter of shape 2 is going to be 4 meters. The way we can define the scale factor between two similar shapes is any dimension on the new shape divided by a corresponding dimension on the original shape. And all that means is we take one dimension from the new shape 
if we've got that value then we look at the exact same dimension on our original shape so it's this top surface here on both of them and what we do we divide the new dimension so that would be six meters divided by the original dimension which is two meters and therefore six divided by two gives us a scale factor of three and because the scale factor is just giving us an indication of how much bigger the new shape is compared to the original we don't have any units after the shape so it's just the number of the new dimension divided by the original dimension and in this case the scale factor is three okay so to explain this in more detail we're now going to have a look at a few examples involving the linear scale factor so this question says that the rectangles a b c d which is this one right here and capital ABCD are similar. What is the length of AD? So just to clarify some of the terms we see in this question, we see that this first one, the first rectangle is called ABCD and that just relates to each of the four corners that make up the rectangle. So we can see here this one is labelled in the lowercase letters and this one is labelled in the uppercase letters. So ABCD capital one is this one here. And when the question asks for, for a length AD, we have to look at the two corners which make up that. So we can see here this is corner A and this is corner D. And all length AD refers to is this side between the two corners. So if it says length AD, we can see here the line goes to this one here. So this side right here must be length AD. So I'm just going to highlight that to make it clear. So the first thing we have to consider is that the question says that both of these rectangles are similar. So that means that there's similar dimensions and ratios between them. So what we have to do now is figure out the scale factor. And to do so, we have to figure out a corresponding side that we have the dimensions both for. And if we look at the example, we can see here that we've been given the side or the length for this one here and the exact same side on the right hand side. For this one here so small cd we know is four meters and the corresponding large cd is seven meters so using that we can then figure out the scale factor we can say that the scale factor is equal to the new dimension so that would be this one over here because that's what we've scaled up so that would be seven meters divided by the corresponding original dimension which is four meters and if we do 7 divided by 4, we can say that the scale factor is 1.75. So now we have the scale factor, we can then calculate this length of AD because if we look at our original shape, we can see that we have the corresponding length of 10 meters. And if we have this, and we also have the scale factor, then we know how much we've increased this side to get to this side. So we can say that length AD is equal to small ad which is this side here multiplied by the scale factor and that would be well small ad is 10 meters and we now know that the scale factor is 1.75 and then if we multiply 1.75 by 10 we can say that length AD is equal to 17.5 meters. And that's us completed the question as it asked to figure out this length and we did so by first figuring out the scale factor and then multiplying the scale factor by the corresponding length on the other side. Let's look at this question now. We'll be told that shape ABCD is to be reduced by a scale factor of 0.6. Now we know that this shape here is ABCD looking at the corners and that means here that if the scale factor is 0.6 then this shape is smaller than this shape by a factor of 0.6. So the question asks what are the lengths of AB and BC and what is the size of angle BCD? So beginning with part A, the lengths of AB and BC well, looking at AB, we can find corner A and corner B. So that must be asking for this length. And then length BC, we can see the corner B and C. 
therefore that must be this length. So the first thing I'm going to do is just write down from the question what the scale factor is and we are told that is equal to 0 0.6. And looking at our scale factor equation, since we want to find out new dimensions of AB and BC, we can rearrange this equation so that instead of dividing by the original dimension, we can take this over to the other side and multiply this by the scale factor so that we can figure out these new dimensions. So it'll look a little something like this. So now looking at this new equation, we can calculate the lengths AB and BC because we have the scale factor and we have the original dimensions necessary. So beginning with AB, we can say that AB is equal to, and because AB is our new dimension, that is equal to our scale factor which is 0 0.6 multiplied by the original dimension and the original dimension for AB is capital AB which is this one here 12 meters because this is the corresponding side to this one here so that would be 0 0.6 multiplied by 12 meters and that is equal to 7.2 meters so let's put that in the diagram and now to calculate our new dimension BC again it's the same process so BC is equal to our scale factor which is 0 0.6 multiplied by the original dimension and in this case it's 15 because that is a corresponding side to this new BC so we can say that BC is equal to 0 0.6 multiplied by 15 and that gives us a length of 9 meters. And now the last part of this question asks us to find out the size of angle B, C and D. So again, just like identifying lengths, to identify angles, we have to look at the corners where B, C and D occur. So we can see here we have B, then we have C, and then we have D. And when this means an angle, it's pretty much the angle between each of the three of these points. So if we have B, C and D, we can see that makes up an angle in this corner here. And that means that we've been asked to figure out this angle right in here. So if you remember, one thing we said about similar shapes was that although the lengths of the sides increase or decrease depending on the magnitude of the scale factor, if they are similar, the angles do not change. So that would mean that every angle within this shape is equal to its corresponding angle in this shape. And what that would mean is, because we've been given the angle of capital B, C and D, which is 65, that means that this is going to be the same angle within this shape here of small B, C and D. So we can say that B, C, D is also equal to 65 degrees because both of the shapes are similar therefore the angles the corresponding angles do not change so let's recap this lesson we've said that similar shapes are identical in shape meaning that they have the same orientation and the same length ratios but they are different in size so looking at the basic shapes we said that circles are always similar we said that squares most of the time are similar the only time which they are not similar is if we are taking into account the orientation and if they are different but for most of the problems we will be coming across we can consider all squares as being similar as well like circles and we said that rectangles can be similar but they also may not be similar as well so we have to look at the shapes and determine for ourselves and the way we do this is by looking into the scale factor and the way we calculate the scale factor is by taking a dimension from a new shape and dividing it by the original corresponding dimension which just means that it's on the same side as the new shape and finally we said that within similar shapes if we increase or decrease the sizes the angles do not change and we can say that as the corresponding angles are equal i hope this video has been helpful to you and if you have any questions be sure to drop them down below and if you are studying National 4 Maths or just want to improve your math skills, be sure to subscribe to the channel and head over to penguinlearning.com. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.